So I think that there's three major issues with idling. The first is just wasted energy. Um, nationally, in America, we waste about 3.8 million gallons of gasoline every year just by letting our cars run for no reason. That is a lot of energy. And if you think about it, if you're paying $2.50, that's like $7 million a day in our economy that's just going down the drain. The second problem with idling is local air pollution. You have things like sulfur dioxide, nitrous dioxide. Um, these are things that can affect human health. And finally, you also have carbon dioxide. As we all know, that contributes to global warming. A lot of people think that their cars need to run for several minutes in order to be driven safely, but that's just not true. Mo modern vehicles, you only need a couple of seconds before you get going. Another misconception is that people think each time you start your car, you waste more gas than if you let it idle. And that's also not true. The rule of thumb is about 10 seconds. If you're going to leave your car on for 10 seconds or more, you may as well turn it off. It will save you gasoline. Uh, finally, people think that repeatedly restarting your car is hard on the engine and quickly drains your battery. This also isn't true. Restarting your car frequently does negligible damage to your engine. However, running your car at an idle setting forces it to run very inefficiently and over time can actually damage your, your car more. Sometimes idling is done in the process of normal driving, like when you're at a stop sign or a stoplight. That's really hard to prevent, and quite frankly, I think it's impractical to prevent. On the other hand, there's locations where we idle, such as at a mailbox, or a drive through or a bank, where it actually is preventable and has um, definable benefits. What we tried to do is use the behavioral principles we've learned from the Human Behavior and Energy Consumption course to alter the behavior of residents of Millennium Apartments in Bloomington. Okay, so similar to Goldstein et al. in 2008, the owners of a hotel fabricated a social norm. Basically, they lied and said the majority of people in this hotel or in a given room reused their towels. And they found that using this intervention increased the rate at which people reuse, reuse their towels. Now, our intervention was a little bit different because it was negatively worded. Uh, the, the term for this is a negatively worded citizen identity descriptive norm message. So what our sign said is that most of the people at Millennium Apartments don't idle and you shouldn't either. So the middle of the sign uses kind of a familiar logo that people can recognize. It's widely used in these sort of anti-idling campaigns, campaigns. It says, turn your key, be idle free. The bottom part of the sign seeks to specifically address one of the misconceptions, namely using that rule of thumb that if your car is going to idle for 10 or more seconds, you should turn it off. What we tried to do is erect our sign hoping that it would change people's behavior. Um, when we were observing, we kept track of things like what day we were observing on, what time it was, what the weather conditions were like, and what type of car the person was driving. We found that about five cars per hour went to check their mail, and each of these cars idled for about 55 seconds. Now, if you assume that every hour in the day has the same amount of people coming during daylight, and make some assumptions about fuel use, you know, trucks use more than cars and such, we estimate that every year 108 gallons of fuel is wasted at, at Millennium Apartments just by people idling to check their mail. Unfortunately, our sign does not appear to be st have a statistically significant effect. And when we ran our regression model, the only thing that seemed to be important was temperature. That's all, folks.